you ever wondered where the rainbow of colours you could see in a soap bubble come from? Here we can see a ripple tank making plain water waves, that's flat water waves, moving towards a barrier with a small gap in it. As the waves go through the gap, we can see that they spread out as circular waves after the gap, and this is called diffraction. This process also happens with light. So if I shine a laser at a narrow gap, we can see that the beam spreads out instead of being a, a small dot and the pattern produced depends upon the width of the slit that the light is shining through. If you were looking down on top of some water waves and drew a line along each wave crest we could call those wave fronts and they would be travelling in this direction like this. A Dutch scientist called Christian Huygens came up with a, a model to explain how the wave travels along from one wave front to the next. He suggested that each point on a wave front, and I've only drawn a few of them here, there are an infinite number of points on a wave front, is a source of new circular waves and he called these new waves secondary wavelets and these wavelets travel out from each point on the wave and where they meet up or where the tangent to them is is where the new wave front would be so I can draw in the new wave front here as the tangent and the wave has moved from there to there. Huygen used his model to explain what happens when a wave is diffracted. And if he had some wave fronts travelling this way and we've got a barrier in the way here, then if we think of this wave that's just passing the barrier and we've got some points on the wave that are producing the secondary wavelets then these points here will produce a wave front a flat wave front like that that's traveling that way but at the edge we've got the wave front curves like this and it's actually traveling in that direction or in that direction and by using this idea of each point on the wavefront producing the secondary wavelengths, wavelets, sorry, Huygens could explain how waves could diffract or bend around the corner of a barrier. Here we can see what happens when light passes through a narrow slit. We can see that the light spreads out into what we call a diffraction pattern that's made up of bright areas with a, a very bright central bit but there are also these dark areas. If we plot a graph of intensity against angle from the slit we can see clearly how the intensity of the light changes from high intensity in the centre moving down to zero then up to a maximum again then zero and a maximum again. We want to explain how these changes in intensity can happen and how we can have dark areas in the pattern. To do that we need to use the idea of superposition of waves where if the waves are in phase, so they're doing the same thing at the same time, then they add up to give an increased amplitude and we call that constructive interference. If they are 180 degrees out of phase so they're doing the opposite things to each other, they cancel out to give zero amplitude and we call this destructive interference. Here we have a wave 
passing through the, a small gap in a barrier and using Huygens principle take every point on the wavefront as a source of these new secondary wavelets what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair the points up so this point at the end is paired up with a point in the middle and every point in this half of the wavefront is paired with a point in this half of the wavefront. And I'm going to think about the wave they produce that's going in this direction which is to a minimum of intensity or destructive interference. Okay, and this is the angle at which that happens. Call that theta. Now, the reason why this is destructive interference is because these two waves are 180 degrees out of phase. And the reason for that is that the top one, this one here, has travelled further than this one. If I just draw a construction line in here, where that's at 90 degrees there, then this distance here is the extra distance that this one has travelled. So for these two to be 180 degrees out of phase, then this distance here must be a half of the wavelength. Okay. So if I fill in what I know about this triangle, I know this side here is if the gap width is D, so that's going to be D from there to there, then this distance here must be a half D. And this angle here must be theta. So, I can say from that using what I know about right angle triangles that a half of d times the sine of theta equals a half of the wavelength. So if I multiply through by 2 I get a nice simple equation d sine theta equals lambda. Okay. So if I think about how d affects, the, the slit width d affects theta, the angle, I can say that sine of theta equals lambda upon d. So the sine of the angle is inversely proportional to d. So my first minimum, my first destructive interference, the angle will increase as D gets smaller because they're inversely proportional. Here the ripple tank is set up with two narrow gaps for the waves to pass through and they diffract as they go through each gap and overlap and produce areas of constructive and destructive interference. We can see that pattern more clearly in this demonstration where we've clearly got areas where the waves are interfering constructively and regions where they're interfering destructively. This also happens with light and they diffract as they go through the slits and the overlap of the two sets of waves produce this pattern of light and dark bands that are called fringes. Here I've got a barrier with two narrow slits in. So as my light waves come this way towards the barrier they will diffract as they go through the two slits and spread out into this area here and overlap. And as they overlap there will be places where they interfere constructively and places where they interfere destructively. So I want to know how we get this interference pattern on this screen here. So, let's start off by thinking about the rays that go to the midpoint here. So, the ray from this slit here and the ray from this slit here have both travelled the same distance. 
So because they've travelled the same dif distance, they will be in phase when they arrive here, so I'll get a bright fringe. My next bright fringe is here, but now the two rays have not travelled the same distance. If I can just highlight what that the difference in the distance is. So if I just draw a construction line here, where that's at 90 degrees to that ray there, then this distance here is the path difference. And for me to get constructive interference here, that difference in the distance, or the path difference, has to be a whole number of wavelengths. And if this is the first fringe away from the centre, that distance must be one wavelength. OK, so let's mark on this distance here and we'll call the distance between the two bright fringes the fringe width W. I've got the distance from the slit to the screen as big D and the distance between the two slits as little d. I can mark this angle here as theta which must be the same as that angle in there which is also theta. So let's start with this triangle in here. So I can say that d sine theta equals lambda for my first bright fringe there and looking at this triangle here I can say that tan theta equals W over D. Now the mathematicians amongst you will know something about uh, angles when they're small because the angles on this diagram are very exaggerated. For small angles, angles, so let's take a small angle alpha, I can say alpha equals sine alpha equals tan alpha. So since these angles are small I can say that sine theta equals W over D and now I can substitute for sine theta in here so I can get D times W over D equals lambda so W equals lambda D over D A diffraction grating has lots of slits or gaps in it. So marked on here I've got all these rays travelling the same direction and these are going towards a, an area of constructive interference and this is going to happen at an angle theta. So if this is the first bright region, the first constructive interference, then this path difference here must be lambda, one wavelength. So it's going to be constructive interference. So if that is lambda there and that is D there, this angle in the triangle must be theta. So my first maximum or region of constructive interference must be at D sine theta equals lambda. But for a diffraction grating I'll get several um, bright fringes and so the second one would be d sine theta equals 2 lambda and so generally for the nth bright fringe I can say that d sine theta equals n lambda.